Hello everyone, I'm Josh Rubenstein, Public Information Director for the Los Angeles Police Department. This critical incident community briefing is intended to provide you with information about an officer-involved shooting that occurred in Southeast Division in the City of Los Angeles on November 20th, 2020. The LAPD conducts very thorough use of force investigations, which typically require investigators to interview multiple witnesses, view numerous hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. We're still at the very early stages of this investigation, which can often take up to a year to complete, and our understanding of the incident may change as this additional evidence is collected, analyzed, and reviewed. We also do not draw any conclusions about whether the officers acted consistent with our policies and the law until all the facts are known and the investigation is complete. A word of caution. The images and information you are about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for young children and sensitive viewers. Hello, I'm Captain Stacy Spell of Media Relations Division of the Los Angeles Police Department. And I'm going to give you a brief overview of an incident that occurred on November 20th, 2020 at around 10.50 p.m. Officers assigned to the Southeast Area Gang Enforcement Detail were patrolling in the Nickerson Gardens area located in the 1300 block of East Imperial Highway when they saw several men gathered around a car that was double parked in the lot of the housing complex. The officers decided to conduct an investigative stop. When the officers exited their vehicle, they saw the suspect making a tossing motion into a nearby parked minivan. At that time, the officers did not know what the suspect had tossed. That suspect was later identified as Nicholas Hankins. One of the officers looked inside the van and saw the item was a handgun. The officer informed his partner of what he saw and advised his partner to take Hankins into custody. And as the partner officer attempted to take Hankins into custody, Hankins resisted, knocked the officer to the ground, and ran while the officer pursued him on foot. The partner officer attempted to retrieve the firearm from the minivan. However, the gun was beyond the officer's reach, and he abandoned the effort to go help his partner involved in the foot chase. It was later discovered that the officer's body-worn video camera dislodged from his uniform and fell off as he reached through the back window in an attempt to retrieve Hankins' handgun. During the chase, the pursuing officer used his taser in an effort to stop Hankins, the taser had no effect and Hankins continued running into one of the housing units. The officer followed Hankins into the dwelling where Hankins then grabbed the taser and tased the officer. That's when an officer involved shooting occurred. Hankins, who was not struck by gunfire, ran out the back door where he was taken into custody with the assistance of the partner officer. Investigators discovered that the gun was removed from the back seat by a second suspect later identified as Laville Bright. Bright removed the handgun from the back seat ran from the location and discarded it next to a trash can before he was taken into custody by responding units. Investigators recovered Hankins' loaded 9mm handgun that was placed in the back seat of the minivan and later removed and discarded by Bright next to the trash can and booked it as evidence. A taser is an electronic control device that is carried by nearly all patrol officers. It fires two metal probes that are designed to cause neuromuscular incapacitation. Body-worn video cameras are used by most officers assigned to field duties. They are worn at chest level and capture a general perspective within line of sight from that angle. The angle of the camera prohibits viewers from seeing everything the officers saw and experienced. Upon activation, both audio and video will turn on. However, body-worn video cameras have a buffer of video without audio from the previous two minutes prior to activation. This feature is designed to capture incidents that occur suddenly where an officer doesn't immediately activate the camera. Here's body-worn video from the officers involved in this incident. The officer-involved shooting was not captured on video because the officer's camera fell off during his initial struggle with Hankins.
Come on, man. All right, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, man. Come on, I'm not doing nothing. Come on. You're choking him out, man. You're choking him out. Hey, shut the fuck away from the car. Shut the fuck away Don't you fucking move. I don't got nothing, son. Hey, you gotta talk like that. Hey, I don't got nothing, son. Knock it off. I don't got nothing, son. Don't move. Hey, sir, I don't got nothing. Don't move. I don't got nothing, son. I don't got nothing. I just ran, they start shooting. All right. 
Kaufman? Hey, Kaufman. They was just shooting. Hey, they was just shooting. They just shot my, my people. They just shot my people. I ain't have nothing, sir. I'm gonna roll you over. Okay. I ain't have nothing, sir. I don't got nothing. I'll put you right here on the car. All right. Nice. Hey, George 37, a CP. Are we on attack? Hey, see George 37, do you have a message? Want yeah, are we on attack for the occurrence on, uh, on success on 115? Mm -hmm. I'll call close to the attack. Hey, see George 37, no, do you need one? Okay. No, I'll just get on simplex, thanks. Hey, CP, you guys on Simplex? Hey, sorry, uh, Ricky Thomas down over here. We are... Oh, uh, we are in it's the right car. here, 1317. We're in the... We're, we're in the... He's right here. Now we gotta put somebody on here. Yeah. Hey, get, get two guys. We need two coppers. Yeah. 1317 East Imperial Highway. So, it, it all makes sense. So, the, 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 I'm hot. The, the guy that was fleeing the scene on foot that Coffin took into custody, this is Path of Travel, and, um, and this is where, where it was. Was this, and it, this, was this, this wasn't the original guy? Or is this the original guy? No, no, it's not Second, the original secondary guy. guy. Secondary guy who picks it up and flees this way. Got it. Uh, stay here. We're going to get some tape. We'll take this off. The initial stop was also captured on nearby surveillance cameras.
Los Angeles Fire Department paramedics transported Hankins to a local hospital where he received treatment for a taser dart removal. Hankins was cleared for booking by the attending physician. He was transported and booked into an LAPD jail facility. Wright was not injured. He was also transported and booked into an LAPD jail facility. The officer who was tased by Hankins was transported to a local hospital for medical evaluation and released the same day. On November 24th, 2020, the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office filed the following charges against Hankins. One count of assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer, one count of resisting arrest, and one count of resisting an officer. Nicholas Hankins is a 31-year-old resident of Los Angeles. On November 24th, 2020, the District Attorney's Office filed one count of felon with a gun against Bright. Laville Bright is a 31-year-old resident of Los Angeles. In the next several months, the LAPD will continue to investigate and analyze this incident. They'll continue interviewing any new witnesses that may come forward and complete any forensic tests. After the investigation is completed, our Critical Incident Review Division will forward their findings to the Chief of Police, who will make his recommendation to the Civilian Board of Police Commissioners. The board will evaluate the evidence to determine whether the officer's tactics, drawing and exhibiting of a weapon, and use of deadly force in this instance met the high standards expected of all LAPD officers. If you'd like more information on how the LAPD and the LA District Attorney's Office investigates all officer-involved shootings and other serious uses of force, visit lapdonline.org, where you can also find LAPD's use of force policies and procedures. Thank you for taking the time to view this critical incident community briefing.